Welcome back. Praise God. Let's prepare for the word of the Lord. Today I want to talk to you about the name of the Lord as a strong tower. Dear friend, brothers and sisters, where do you find strength in times of weakness? Where do you find peace in times of turmoil? Where do you find hope in times when you're discouraged? Where do you find comfort when your heart is troubled? And where do you find refuge when you are overwhelmed? The Bible says in the book of Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 10, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runs to it. And they are safe. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. God has revealed himself throughout history through names. And his name symbolizes his character and his nature. It says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. It says the righteous. Who is the righteous? That person who has put their faith and trust in Jesus to forgive them of their sins. And has allowed Jesus to become their savior. That's the righteous. It says the righteous knows where to run. They run to the name of the Lord. And they are safe. We live in troubled times today. And people don't know where to turn. People are all running for refuge to the wrong things in life. But thank God we know where to run. What is a strong tower? First of all, physically... Literally, a strong tower is the innermost, highest, strongest, inaccessible area of a structure, especially of a castle. It is the place in a building where the enemy has the most difficult time to penetrate. It gives us an example in the book of Judges chapter 9 and verse 51. It says, but there was a strong tower inside the town and all the men and women, the entire population fled to it. They barricaded themselves in it and climbed up to the roof of the tower. You know, King Abimelech was coming against this small little town. And when this mighty force came upon them, the Bible says these people ran to the high tower. The innermost part. Of that town, a high point, very fortified and strong. And the king came in. And guess what happened? They threw a millstone from all the way up there upon his head. And he died. And he and his army was defeated. That's a strong tower. And people in Bible days built strong towers, physical strong towers. And they would run to it because it would be the most difficult place for the enemy to penetrate and to conquer. Talking about a spiritual strong tower. We're talking about God, the name of God, the person of God, a highly elevated place of safety, so high and strong that it is absolutely inaccessible for penetration or capture by our enemy, the devil. In Psalms chapter 61 verse 3 through 4, It says, for you are my safe refuge, a strong tower where my enemies cannot reach. Let me live forever safe beneath the shelter of your wings. This is not theology that I just read. That verse were written by the psalmist who found God to be that strong tower where the enemy, the devil, cannot reach him and I want to let you know when you make God your refuge when when you find the revelation of his person through his name you can run there and the enemy will not be able to overcome and defeat he cannot penetrate God's glory and power you know throughout the ages God has been a strong tower for his 
people. In Psalms 20 and verse 7, it says, Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God. The world trusts in chariots and horses, meaning human ingenuity, human power, human ability. But the psalmist says, we Christians, believers, we trust in the name of the Lord our God. In Nahum chapter 1 and verse 7, it says, the Lord is good. A strong tower in times of trouble. He cares for those who trust in him. Do you trust in him? If you trust in him, the Bible says he cares for you. He is a strong tower, especially in times of trouble. And we are living in troubled times right now. So we need to find our strong tower, the name of the Lord we come to trust in God and rely on him as that strong tower through the revelation of himself given to us by his names in scripture because each name reveals a different aspect of God's nature and character that is available to his children if you are a child of God then God's name is available to you and you can run to it and be safe. Well, today let's take the first name by which God revealed himself to his children. The very first name and that's God the Creator, Elohim. Let's look at what a refuge that can become for us. Let's find comfort in this name. In Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1, it says, In the beginning God, Elohim, demonstrated his power, greatness, as he created the heavens and the earth. When we think about a strong tower, we're thinking about God, the creator, we're talking about when God created the universe and human beings. He exerted his power, his greatness above any human strength and ability. God created the earth, the universe, the Bible says, the heavens and the earth. And then the psalmist says in Psalm 33 verse 6 and 9, it says, The Lord made the heavens and all their hosts by the breath of his mouth. Let all the earth fear the Lord and stand in awe of him. The psalmist says, let all the earth stand in fear and awe of him. Why? Could you imagine the vastness of this universe, the complexity of the bodies of human beings. And the Bible says God made this without lifting one finger. It was simply created by his spoken word, by the breath of his mouth. How great is our God? God revealed himself as creator, our strong tower. Praise God. In Psalms 104, verse 1 through 5, it says, O Lord, my God, you are very great, who stretched out the heavens like a curtain, who laid the foundations of the earth so that it should not be moved forever. The psalmist declared what so many millions and billions today refuse to declare. The psalmist looked above and said, God, you are very very great hallelujah would you say that with me God you are very great but get this God is not great just because he created something out of nothing God is great just because of who he is without doing anything at all God himself is great and greatly to be praised hallelujah let's look just very quickly at the difference between man's best ability and God's effortlessness. 
You know, planes fly at 500 miles an hour. Well, what an invention. How great is man? 500 miles an hour, man invented the plane. Well, God created light and light travels at 186,282 miles per second. What a comparison, right? What an equation. How equal is that? It's not equal at all. Man's invention is so much less than our mighty God who created the universe. You know, the sun is 93 million miles from earth. A jumbo jet, man's invention, would take 21 years nonstop to reach the sun. And God created light, and light reaches the earth in eight minutes. Think about that. Man made the jumbo jet, and it would take 21 years nonstop to reach the sun. And yet sun, the light from the sun, reaches the earth in eight minutes. How great is our God. What a strong tower. The closest star is 4.3 light years away. A plane would take 51 million years nonstop to reach it. Light reaches the closest star in 4.3 years. How great is our God. What a strong tower. What a refuge in times of trouble. Our great creator, Elohim. So the world is not a result of evolution God created the world and God sustains the world by divine design. It is here and we're enjoying it today. But get this, that awesome, great, all-powerful creator made you and me. We are also not a result or a product of evolution. Evolution is nothing more than the figment of man's imagination. Our great high tower, our refuge, our God, the creator of the universe and humankind is the one behind the beauty of creation and human life. In Genesis chapter 2 verse 7, it says, And the Lord God, Jehovah Elohim, talking about a relationship, intimacy, his concern and his love, formed a man of the dust of the ground and breathed. He poured of himself into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living being to live in a relationship with God. You know, the Bible didn't say, and God created man. It says, the Lord God, meaning Jehovah Elohim. The word Jehovah means relationship, intimacy, a God of relationship. The creator God who created us for a relationship. And you see, this is when the name of the Lord become so precious and so personal. When we come into a relationship with God. We don't just serve God through theology. We don't just hear about Him. We don't just believe in Him. But we actually initiate a relationship. Him with us and us with Him. We live in a daily relationship with Him. And there is where we come to find Him to be a very caring, loving God, the creator, and the, the father of our souls who desires and desperately wants a relationship with us. Let me ask you, have you ever struggled with your self-image? There are millions and millions, countless millions of people in the world who struggle with their self-image. They look in the mirror. They don't like what they see. Have you ever struggled with your family origin? Have you ever struggled with why was I born? Why was I born this way? What is the purpose of my life? What is the purpose of living? 
God created you, my friend, my brothers, my sisters. God created you. He doesn't make mistakes. He has a plan and purpose for your life. Run to Him all the time. He is your strong tower in times of insecurity. You know, many times in life we become discouraged. We become frustrated. We become fearful. Many times in life we just feel like, what's the purpose of living? Why go forward? Things are always against me and never for me. And when we look just at self, we would tend to really not want to continue in life. But the truth is, is that God our creator, Jehovah creator, made us to have a relationship with him. And he created us with a purpose. He created us with a blueprint. God wants us to live in a relationship with Him. That's how life is best enjoyed and received when we live in a relationship with Him. Beyond what our eyes can see, beyond what we feel, beyond our experiences, beyond what life throws at us, beyond what people throws at us, we were created, each individual, we were created by God. We were created by God, first of all, to have a relationship with Him. And secondly, we were created by God to prosper and to be successful and to be the head and not the tail, to dwell only above and not beneath, to lend and never to borrow. Oh, my brothers and sisters, all of this is found in the name of the Lord our God. The Bible says the righteous run to it and they are safe. Our strong tower, Jehovah Elohim. In Jeremiah 29 and verse 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. I know that many times, this seems like the farthest thing from what is happening in our life. But you know what? We have to accept this, believe this, receive this, and declare this by faith, in faith, trusting that what God says is true. You are not a mistake. We are not mistakes. We were divinely created by God. God to be loved immensely and deeply by God for us to love God immensely and deeply to live in a divine relationship with him where he speaks into our lives and where he bless our lives he says I know the plans that I have for you you know the devil also has plans for us his plan is to steal to kill and to destroy but that can only happen when we're living in his domain when we allow him to speak into our life. But when we walk by faith and we believe God and we trust God and we walk in his ways. Then God's plan to prosper us can come to pass. He says I'm not here to harm you like the devil is. I'm here to give you a future filled with hope. From when did God know you? Well, Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 4 and 5 says, The word of the Lord came to me saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I already knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. That's how precious you are to God. That's how much of a purposeful life you have. God says, Before you were conceived in the womb, I already knew you. He says, and before you were born, I already set you apart. I set you apart to be in a relationship with you. I set you apart to do my will. I set you apart to prosper, to thrive. I have set you apart to lead, to be in dominion, to overcome in this life. He says, I have appointed you. 
The name of the Lord is a strong tower. When you feel down, when you feel discouraged, when you feel like somehow you're, you're, you're not fulfilling any purpose in life, when you feel like you're all down and frustrated and, and empty and, and just depressed, run to the name of the Lord, Jehovah Elohim. Run to Him and reassure yourself to Him, in Him. And say to him, my creator king, my creator God, I don't feel like much, but you created me. And know that you created me with purpose. And know that you created me to thrive and to overcome and to excel and to exceed and to triumph and to live in peace. God, I hide myself in you. The enemy attacks me, but Lord, you're my strong tower. I climb up to that place of safety in your name, my creator king. There I find my peace and my joy in you. In Jeremiah 31, verse 3 and 4, it says, Long ago the Lord says, I have loved you, my people, with an everlasting love. With unfailing love have I drawn you to myself. I will rebuild you. You will again be happy and dance merrily. Maybe life has not been going too well for you at the moment. Maybe you find yourself discouraged and down. Maybe you find the odds against you. Maybe you just feel like you're boxed in and nothing seems to work. I want to remind you, your creator king, Jehovah Elohim, tells you today, I have loved you with an everlasting love. He says, I will rebuild you. I will cause you to rise again. I will prosper you. I will cause you to succeed. I will cause you to triumph. He says, you'll be happy again. And you will dance merrily in my presence. Now this is not your friend saying this. This is God Almighty. Your friend might have the best wishes for you. But can't do a thing about your situation. But God can. God says, I'll rebuild you. I will reestablish you. I'll cause you to rise up again. He says, and you're going to be merry. You're going to be happy. My friend, now's a very good time. In times like this where the world is troubled and sometimes we're affected by all the darts and, and arrows of the enemy, now's a good time to learn to run to your refuge. Your safe place, your strong tower, the name of the Lord, Jehovah Elohim, your creator king. And reassure yourself in him that he is for you and not against you. That he will strengthen you. That he will give you peace. That he will cause you to have the upper hand in life. And that your future looks brighter every single day in him. Live in a relationship with him. You need it desperately needed in Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5 and 6 it says don't love money be satisfied with what you have don't love money be satisfied with what you have you see loving money creates a lot of problem it didn't say you can't have money it didn't say you can't be rich it didn't say you can't have much it says don't love it don't make it your idol don't make it your God don't make it your purpose in life don't run to it as if it's the only thing that is necessary don't love money be satisfied with what you have for God has said which God creator king Jehovah Elohim, the one who fashioned you for a relationship with him. The one who wants to speak into your life, to love you and to bless you. This God has said, I will never leave you. I will never abandon you. You know, you're his beloved. He will not forsake you no matter how it looks. God will be by your side. Why? Because the purpose he created you for was to be in a relationship with you. He will not walk away from that relationship. He will fulfill all the pleasures of his love for you. Look to him, your creator king, Jehovah Elohim. He will never leave you. He'll never abandon you. And verse 6 says, so we can say with confidence, 
The Lord is my helper, so I will have no fear. Why does fear come in? Why is fear a part of our life? Fear is there because we have our faces, our hearts turned away from God. We're looking at the situations and circumstances of life. We're looking at all the troubles we have, all we're going through, all our lack and sicknesses and pains. That's why fear comes in. But the Bible says, we shall not fear for the Lord is our helper. When we take our eyes off our situations, we can look to God and find comfort and strength and peace and joy and hope every single day. He is our creator king. God did not create us. Just to walk away from us and then to tell us, figure out the rest of our lives. Absolutely not. He'll be with us from the beginning to the end. In Psalms 48 and verse 14, it says, For that is what God is like. He is our God forever and ever. He will be our guide until the day we die. Imagine that. Our lives began with God in the wombs of our mothers. Each and every one of us. That's where our life began. And God says, even when you were in the darkness of your mother's womb, I saw you. I looked at you. I knew you. I had plans for you. And then... Psalms 48, 14 says, He will guide us even to the day we take our last breath. How does this happen? It happens when we look to Him to be our guide, our strong tower, our refuge. It happens when we choose to develop and live in daily relationship with Him. We realize that life is not as bad as it looks. We realize that we are not consumed by our troubles, but indeed that God is in control. Friend, we cannot control the troubles that come to us. We cannot control the adversities that comes our way in life. But we can look to God, our Creator King. The Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and they are safe. If you are righteous, if you have been made righteous because you chose Jesus, because you chose to give him your sins, because you chose to make him your savior, then indeed you're righteous. Indeed. The Bible says the righteous runs to him, to his name, to his person. And it says they are safe. Really? The only true place of safety in the world today is in our God. And when we learn the revelation of himself through his names, like today, Jehovah Elohim, we realize that God created us. We realize that God has a plan for us. We realize that God wants to live in a relationship with us. We realize that God will never leave us. He'll never abandon us. We realize that God will be there for us even up to the day of our death. Wow, what a blessed assurance. What comfort, what hope. Let's be strengthened in Him. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. Brothers, we're not hopeless. Sisters, we're not hopeless like the world is. We have a place to run. While people would make so many things their refuge in life, all of it is insecure. All of it is uncertain. All of it is ever-changing. But our God never changes. He remains the same forever and ever. So we can run to our Creator. We can run to our Jehovah, God of relationship, we can run to our king and lay there and pour out our tears and find comfort and strength in him. He cares for us. He loves us. He has more power than every human being put together. Let's take a little time to pray. Can I ask you to close your eyes and bow your heads? Heavenly Father, 
God, we're the problem. You're not. Oh God, we allow ourselves to be overtaken by the troubles of the world. We lose our focus, Lord God, because we walk more by sight than by faith. God, we come to you today. We ask you, would you take us in your arms? Lord, would you kiss us? Would you whisper in our ears? Would you strengthen us? Would you fill us with hope? Oh God, we refocus our spiritual sight. We train it to look to you. God, like the people in the Old Testament, we run to our high tower, to our strong tower. There in you, the devil cannot reach us, cannot torment us, cannot fill us with doubt, unbelief, fear. But there, you alone, in a deep, comforting, loving relationship with us, there we find Comfort and peace and joy. Oh Lord. Touch our hearts. God put your hook in it. And draw us to you every single day. Give us the desire to read the word every day. To worship you daily. To pray to you and to listen to you as you speak to us. Oh God, we are convinced and believe that we are not a part or a product of evolution. We're here today because you chose us. You chose to give birth to us and you choose to give us a plan and purpose in you. Lord, today we renew our faith and find our strength in you. Our high tower strong tower where the enemy cannot reach Jehovah Elohim our creator king in Jesus name my brothers and my sisters God bless you let's go back and worship the Lord again as we close this service today